is the second video that I will provide the second. As we mentioned before, we are interested in discovering the different private psychologies in order to understand the main job or the main task of the psychology. Because answering the question about the different type of psychologies will enable us to understand and answer the question of what do psychologists do. And as we said also before, we can discriminate between two types of psychologists. The first one, the Euro basic psychologist, and the second one is applied psychologist. And let me define the first type as your psychologists try to discover the basic laws and the principles of psychological and the mental phenomena. And we said the second two aims of psychology, description and understanding, are the main aims of the pure or basic psychology. They try to descri describe, they try to name or classify the psychological phenomena without, without asking the question of why. And also, they try to understand and explain the psychological uh, phenomena by discovering their causes, by discovering the factors, variables, mechanisms that cause this phenomena and maintain them. Today, we went through the different subtypes of the Euro basic psychologists, and we will cover, cover some about six subtypes. The first one is experimental psychology, the second one, physiological psychologists, the third one is talking about the psychologist who, who is interested in animal psychology, and the fourth one, developmental psychologist, and also we will cover some about social psychologists and the psychologist who is interested in abnormal psychology. And you have to take into account that if we are trying to define any subtype of psychologist, in that way, we can define the discipline itself. For example, if I give you a definition, the definition of experimental psychologist, you have to understand that we can use the same sentence in defining experimental psychology as a discipline. And also, if you know some about physiological psychologists, you can, we, you can also understand the meaning of physiological psychology as a discipline, and so forth. Now, we have to move and define the first one, experimental psychologists. The first subtype of the basic psychology is referred to as the experimental psychology. The main characteristic that related to the, ex to, related to the experimental psychologist is that he uses lab research, laboratory research, and the conduct experiments, observations, using objective tools. So, how can we define the experimental psychologist? The definition as follows. The experimental psychologist usually conducts laboratory research or lab research or psychological experiments to discover principles and the laws of covert and the covert behavior. This is first point you have to understand the definition of experimental psychologists. The second point we have to cover, what about the area of research? What about the areas studied by the experimental method and the experimental psychologists? Experimental psychologists study, study, studies more and more topics 
most of functions of psychological functions, such as sensation, perception, learning, memory, motivation, intelligence, and so on. But in doing research, in doing lab research, in doing experiments, he conducted experiments in his psychological lab using objective tools in this psychological research. And the last point in this area about the experimental psychologist that you have to remember uh, when we uh, talk about the experimental research method, we, we said the experimental research method or the scientific, sorry, the scientific research method is a basic strategy that is carefully designed to ensure that reliable facts can be established by the independent, by independent investigators or by the field investigators. And we said we have three subtypes of the scientific method. One of them, the experimental research method. And by definition, we can say now the experimental research method could be used by the experimental psychologist, but also it could be used by other psychologists, such as clinical psychologists, educational, social, child psychologists, psychologists, and so on. But one of uh, one uh, characteristic of the uh, experimental psychologist that he depends mainly on the experimental research method. Now, we, to sum, we covered three main points. The first one, what about the definition of experimental psychologist? And the second point, what are main topics studied in the experimental lab? And the third one, the relationship between experimental research method or experimental approach and the experimental psychology. Now we move to the second subtype sub of the basic psychology. The second subtype is physiological psychology. The first two points define physiological psychology as a discipline and the physiological psychologist as a, as a profession. What about the physiological psychology? Physiological psychology is the study of the physiological basis of behavior. Do you remember when defi we define psychology and while we were talking about the subject matter of psychology, we said before that the subject matter of psychology involves three aspects. The first one, overt behavior, including the motor activities, uh, verbal reports, or verbal communication, and the non-verbal communication. And the second aspect is covert behavior, including all functions, psychological functions that are derived and internal, and they are indirectly observed, uh, and they such as uh, are feelings, emotions, motivation, intelligence, creativity, and so on. And the third aspect is physiological changes or physiological factors or physiological fa variables or biological variables or factors or mechanisms that correlated with overt and covert behavior. We are not interested in physiological factors as we are because we are not, we are not physiologists, we are psychologists. We are interested in the relationship our main focus is the relationship between physiological factors and psychological factors, physiological functions and psychological functions. So we can define physiological psychology as a study of physiological basis of behavior. In physiological psychology, we are trying to discover we are trying to discover the relationship between physiological factors and psychological factors, between physiological or biological functions and psychological functions between behavior and the physiology of the body. Uh, and the, I mean by behavior, either we are talking about overt behavior or covert behavior. What about the definition of physiological psychologists? 
you can define this logical psychologist as the person who investigates the body structure and functions that seem most directly correlated with the behavior, that most directly related to the behavior. So we are not interested in these body structure and functions as they are, but we are interested in the relationship between these structures, these functions, these biological fu structures, these biological functions, and psychological functions or and behavior. Either we are talking about overt or covert uh, behavior. And of course, we can use these two definitions interchangeably. We, so we, I can say that physiological psychologist, who, uh, he, he is the person who studies the physiological basis of behavior. And I can define the physiological uh, psychology as a discipline as it is the discipline that investigates the body structures and functions that seem most directly correlated with behavior. But don't forget, and also remember that we are not interested in the physiological functions as they are. Well, for example, we are not interested in the brain itself, but I am interested in the relationship between the brain and the, and the behavior, covert or covert behavior. I'm not interested in hormone itself, but I am interested in any, any sort of hormones. Uh, but I am interested in the relationship between some sort of hormones and behavior. For example, the relationship between adrenaline and aggressive behavior, for example. And now, what about the main points, the main topics? that could be studied in physiological psychology. So from psychophysiological point of view, take care. From psychophysiological point of view, we can study all psychological functions, such as perception, motivation, emotion, learning, memory, cognition, mental disorder, psychological illness, and so on. We can study all functions, but from psychophysiological point of view, what do we mean by psychophysiological point of view? Psychophysiological point of view means that we are trying to, to, dis, to do, we are trying to discover the physiological basis of this function. We are trying to relate between bodily structures and functions and these psychological functions. Now, the uh, fourth point that about the uh, factors that may, physical factors that may affect our behaviors. Uh, you should know that any factors that could affect the nervous system in turn will affect overt and covert behavior. Any factors will affect, will influence the nervous system in turn or by definition will affect the overt and the covert behavior. For, for example, metabolism, hormones, disease, drug ingestion, diet, heredity, all these factors are expected to affect the nervous system and by definition, and in turn, will affect the overt and the covert behavior. The last point in this area about the physiological psychologist that like the experimental psychology, in experimental psychology, we have experimental psychological lab, and also in physiological psychology, we have psychophysiological lab. And also, we depend on lab research and the quantitative data in physiological psychology as we do in, in experimental psychology. Now, to sum, we covered six main points about physiological psychology. Number one, what about the definition of physiological psychology? Number two, what about the definition of physiological psychologist? Number three, what about the main topics that could be studied in the physiological psychology from psychophysiological point of view? Number four, what about the main factors, main physical factors that affect the nervous system? And number five, what is the relationship between these factors 
and uh, overt and covert behavior. And we said because these factors affect the nervous system in turn, this, uh, they should affect also overt and covert behaviors. And the number six, what about the physiological lab and the quantitative data show that we already in physiological psychology, we depend on them. Now, we will move to the third five. The following five is developmental psychology. Before explaining the definition of developmental psychologist, we have uh, first uh, take some about the psychologist who is interested in animal psychology. If you remember, while we were talking about the definition of psychology, one of these definitions uh, was uh, it is the scientific study of overt and covert behaviors in humans and animals. So one of our subjects, one of our uh, participants in our psychological research are animals. And animals are used in about 7% of our psychological uh, experiments. And as we said before, we, uh, animals uh, are inexpensive and we can study multiple generation and this is one of the advantage, advantages of the animal studies. Now, what about the definition of animal psychology or the psychologist who is interested in animal psychology? We can define this psychologist as, as follows. He uses animals as experimental subjects, as experimental participants in, in his psychological research. Why? Hoping to learn much about what? About human nature indirectly, in direct way, and in an economic way. And also we can define the animal psychology as a, uh, uh, as a, a discipline that conduct experiments on animals in order to learn about human nature but in an indirect way and in an economic way. Now what about developmental psychologists? The developmental psychologists. Now we must begin with the definition of developmental psychology. And don't forget that if you know the definition of the discipline, you can use the same definition to define the professional in this discipline. Developmental psychology is referred to sometimes as a child psychology. We can say it as developmental psychology or a child psychology. And the principal topics included in this area or this discipline or this field including language acquisition and the development, language development, motor skill development, personality development, social, emotional, and intellectual growth. So the key concepts, the key words in the definition of developmental psychology are acquisition, development, growth. If you add any of these words to any psychological function, it will be one topic that is studied in developmental psychology. For example, intelligence growth, intelligence development, language acquisition, motor skills development, motor skills growth, intellectual growth, emotional growth, social growth, social development, the main key words are acquisition, development, growth. What about the definition of developmental psychology or developmental psychologist? We can define developmental psychologist as follows. It is a psychologist who is concerned with develop, development and the growth of behavior and experience. I mean 
by behavior and experience overt and covert behavior. So it is the psychologist who is concerned with development and the growth of behavior and experience of overt and covert behavior in the fetus, infant, child, adolescent, adult, and old age. What about the big names, and figures in this field? We have some big names. For example, the, uh, the German psychophysiologist William Breyer, the American psychologist, uh, psychologist Stanley Hall, and we have some of the some of the psychoanalysts such as Anna Freud and Melanie Klein. And also, we have one of the most important figures, uh, important figure in this area, Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget developed a theory about an important theory, an influential theory about the cognitive development. And he stated that the cognitive development has four steps or has four stages. And now we are going to clarify these four stages and the difference between or differences between or among them. What are the four cognitive development stages as described by BH? Number one, sensory motor stage. Number two, pre-operational stage. Number three, concrete operational stage. Number four, formal operational stage. So we have four stages, sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, formal operational. And you have to know three matters, three points about these four stages. Number one, the point number one is what about the name and the sequence or order of these four stages? The order or sequence is very, very, very important. Number two, the point number two, what about the age of each stage? Number three, what about the main characteristics of each one? So you should be acquainted with three points about each, uh, these four stages. Number one, what about their name and sequence or order? What about the age interval or age of each stage? And what about the main characteristics of each one? Let us start with the first stage, sensory motor stage. The first stage, sensory motor stage, it is from birth to age two. And it is characterized by two main things. Number one, two main issues. Number one, a children experience the world through movements and senses. It is the only way to explore the world, to understand the world that the child use his senses. The second characteristic is the children in this stage are extremely egocentric. I mean, they are characterized by egocentrism, meaning they cannot perceive the world from other viewpoints. They believe that they are the center of the world or the center of the life. They cannot consider others. They are very, 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 very egocentric. What about the second stage, pre-operational stage? It is from age two to seven. And the, the main two characteristics, the main three characteristics in this stage are, number one, magical thinking, breeding needs. I mean by magical thinking, a logic thing. 
The second point or the second characteristic acquisition of motor skills. This stage is characterized by motor skill development, rapid motor development. And the third characteristic, what I call it, egocentrism. In this stage, begins very, 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 very strong and then decreases. So we have three main characteristics, magical thinking be dominates, acquisition of motor skills, and egocentrism begins very strong and then decreases. What about it? the third stage? Concrete operational stage. It is from age 7 to 12. And it is characterized by logical thinking. Children can think logically, but are very concrete. They are characterized by concrete thinking. What is the meaning of concrete thinking? Concrete thinking is the opposite of abstraction. If you depend on your sense, it is concrete, uh, concrete uh, thinking. But if you depend on mentality, it is abstract thinking. For example, if I am talking about this pen, it is a concrete concept because you can perceive it with your senses. But if I am talking about freedom, love, it is an abstract concept. And this is the difference between concrete and abstraction. What about the, uh, the last uh, stage, formal operation? It is from age 12 onwards, and it is characterized by abstract reasoning or abstract thinking. In this stage, the children can think logically and in an abstract way. To sum, we have four stages, and the order of them as follows sensory motor, pre operational, concrete operational, and the formal operational. The first one is from birth to age two. The second one from 2 to 7, the third one from 7 to 12, and the last one from age 12 onwards. The first one characterized by depending on movement and senses, and uh, children are extremely, are uh, highly or extremely First one characterized by depending on movement and senses, and uh, uh, children are extremely are uh, highly or extremely uh, egocentric. The second one characterized by magical thinking, acquisition of motor skills, egocentrism begins very high and then decreases. The third one characterized by logical thinking, but in a very concrete way. And the last one, uh, characterized by the development of abstract reasoning or abstract thinking. Now we have uh, two more subtypes of basic psychologists. The first one, social psychology. Uh, the social psychology emerged in the United States in the uh, 1920s. And the reason for that, uh, that you know, uh, uh, the United States uh, includes the, uh, different ethnic groups. For example, Latino, Hispanic, Asian, uh, Indians, uh, uh, African American, and so on. And this area or this field emerged to study the differences between these ethnic groups. Are they, are, are, they, are they similar or they have different characteristics, psychological characteristics? What about the difference between or differences between them is the personality characteristics and the personality traits? What about the difference between them in intelligence, memory, education, beliefs, faith, social behavior, and so on? 
What about the definition of social psychology? It is a branch of psychology, a branch of basic psychology, concerned with personality, attitudes, motivation, care, beliefs, and the behavior of the individual or group in the context of social interaction. So social psychology is interested in studying the difference between different groups in personality, attitudes, motivation, faith, beliefs, and social behavior, and also is interested in studying the social interaction. And also social psychology is interested in studying how the group operates. I mean by how group operates the group dynamics. To some, social psychology is a branch of psychology dealing with social interaction and the group dynamics, dealing with the difference between groups in uh, the main psychological characteristics and the function. The last subtype of psychology, the psychologist who is, in, who is interested in abnormal psychology. The last subtype we will study together uh, in the uh, basic psychology is the psychologist who is interested in the abnormal psychology. We have a branch it is referred to as abnormal psychology, and we should be acquainted with the difference between abnormal psychology and the clinical psychology. If we are talking about clinical psychology, uh, we are talking a discipline or a branch of applied science. But if you are talking about abnormal psychology, you are talking about a branch of uh, basic psychology. Uh, so uh, in applied psychology, you are trying to apply the, 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 the laws and the principles of the behavior in order to help humans in one way or another. And in this area, in order to help humans in the clinical field. In the clinical field, the main tasks would be diagnosis, treatment or therapy and the prevention. So if we are talking about these three main tasks, in that case, we are talking about clinical psychology. And we will uh, talk a lot about clinical psychology in, uh, uh, as a subtype of applied psychology. But now we are talking about the psycho abnormal psychology, not clinical psychology. We are interested now in abnormal psychology, but clinical psychology is a branch of applied psychology. What is the difference between abnormal psychology and the clinical psychology? Is the difference between abnormal psychology and the clinical psychology is the same difference between basic psychology and applied psychology. In basic psychology, you are trying to describe and explain psychological factors or psychological functions. And in applied, we are trying to put these principles into practice. The same is the difference between abnormal and the clinical. In abnormal psychology, we are trying to understand, we are trying to describe the abnormal behavior, the psychological disorders, psychiatric disorders, the psychological problems. But if we are going to uh, make a diagnosis, if we are trying to treat this disorder or to prevent this disorder or make prevention, in that case, we moved from abnormal psychology to clinical psychology. And don't forget that we said before, actually no clear cut between the two kinds of uh, psychologists, the basic and the applied, and also abnormal and the clinical, because many psychologists may combine the, between the two kinds of interests in what they do and the same activity, the two kinds of activities in what they do. The same in abnormal and the clinical. Maybe someone, if he, if he is doing a research about the abnormal behavior, in that case, he is a psychologist in the field of abnormal psychology. But if he is trying to apply this, results of research. In order to help humans, uh, what is the meaning of helping humans? Diagnose them, uh, treat them, prevent them. In that case, he moved to applied psychology, uh, I mean he moved to clinical uh, psychology. For example, when uh, uh, I did my uh, master research, my master research was the neurological characteristics, neuropsychological characteristics of 
people who at risk for schizophrenia. In that case, I was working in the abnormal psychology, in the field of abnormal psychology. But if I am going now to apply the results of this research in order to make prevention, in order to prevent these people before they develop the disorder, in that case, I, I will be moved from abnormal psychology to clinical psychology. Now, what is the definition of abnormal psychology or the psychologist who is interested in abnormal psychology? He is concerned with, or this discipline is concerned with, or this profession is concerned with uh, discipline if I am talking about say, abnormal psychology. He is if I am talking about the professional in this area, in this abnormal psychology. He is concerned with the odd and the unusual aspects. I mean by odd, abnormal, something unusual. Uh, or the odd and the unusual aspects of the behavior and experience of overt and covert, uh, covert behavior, looking toward the understanding of people in trouble, just to understand. But if I am going to move to predict or control, in that case, I moved to applied psychology. Now I am in the clinical psychology field. That's all about uh, the basic psychologist. We define basic psychologist and then we uh, cover some about subtypes of uh, basic psychologist, including uh, uh, abnormal psychology, including experimental psychology, physiological psychology, developmental psychology, social psychology, and the animal psychology. And now we have to move to the other side. Uh, it is uh, which is referred to as applied psychology, and this is will be done in the next video. Thank you.